Well, hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Sugar Pine Zoo. Yes, today, as you could tell from the lovely little thumbnail, we are making a kind of pseudo kind of weird habitat. Uh, let's actually explain it a little bit. So I played around with this concept of a splash pad and animal viewing for a little bit now. Uh, you guys might remember my platypus speed build from a little bit back in the day. It's um, it's a little bit on par with the diorama trend that happened a little bit ago. By the way, I'm still hoping to do a few dioramas. I still love them so much. But of course, I want to incorporate that in a much more brighter setting over here as well. And I do apologize for the jump cuts over here. NVIDIA was being really sus recently. So it was like stopping and starting and it wouldn't tell me when it stopped. So there's a few cutoff things in here. So I do apologize apologize on that but hopefully we can look past it and look for this build for it, what it truly is so of course i want to incorporate a little bit of a pseudo underwater viewing with uh, a splash pad for our little beaver friends now i'm so freaking happy that we got the beaver they are easily some of my favorite like little mammals in the world and planet zoo did such a bang up job with them they are looking absolutely incredible i love their little waddle um, they build the dam really cute, and I include some footage on that later down the line, but uh, you'll see that in a bit. And I also use some of ZZ's little uh, foliage bundles of logs, beaver dams, yes. So I do include some of those for some theming. Uh, it's kind of realistic, I would say. Like, you know, you'd probably just bundle up a bunch of sticks and logs together and slap them all together. So I feel like that is pretty fine right there. And I do change out the path for some mulch. So we can probably imply that that's like, you know, water tight, water resistant. I don't really know. But let's just pretend with that idea. Yeah, let's just go forward with that. Uh, it totally works like that. And of course, I did want to include some staff gates as well. Because, of course, we got to get our animals in here. Um, so the backstage holding really isn't the best. Um, obviously, I don't really care for backstage all that much. You guys could probably already tell that from the sea lion enclosure. I'm not going to be focusing on all that stuff this time around. I'm going to be only focusing on the whole zoo as a whole. Uh, doing some like, you know, little food stands maybe here and there. Maybe including some plushies and stuff. Like little, little market stalls. I feel like we can have a really fun time with that going down the line. But of course here I am working on a little bit of beaver dam. And I did love how this looks. So you can kind of see a little bit of a mini waterfall inside the actual enrichment item itself. By the way, Frontier absolutely blew my mind with these animations. They are so freaking cute. Like, Zoo Tycoon 3 level animations. And I know people don't really like ZT3 all that much, but their animations, you can't sleep on those animations. They were amazing. So of course I wanted to have a few water features in here as well for the guests. So if the kids are here on a hot day, this would be open and they would be able to splash around in the parents would be able to watch them from you know either up above at our little viewing canopy or from down below in the in the in the in the war zone as it is because you know i don't really like to get wet all that much but here i am doing some more planting up there so i do copy uh this little gravel technique all throughout the zoo I'm pretty happy with it. I think it actually ties the entire zoo together pretty well. And it gives it like this nice clean look to it. I don't know. I just really like it. And also including some rock work on the back end of that to make, sh make it look like, you know, a little bit natural. I don't know. I just really like it in the end. But of course, here we are just going through the entire thing, doing some more rock work. And going through and making this stuff look mad pretty. Also, these trees... I don't know what they're called. I think they're called like the Proi Proceps, Proceps. I don't know what they are, but I just found out that they existed. They've been in the game for like a long time, but I just found out they existed like the other day and I can't stop using them. It's always with these little pieces that like, you know, you never pay a passing mind to. And then you finally find them and you're like, oh my God, these are actually game changers. So I don't know, I just love that. And I also include another water feature going down here for the guests to kind of look down at. Also for the beavers to maybe interact with, maybe they want to go for a little bit of a slip and slide. They have that option for them right there. I'm, of course, doing some rock work over here. Keeping most of the habitat land area relatively boring. Just because, I don't know, I want some more emphasis on the water features and the viewing platform as it is. 
Uh, and taking away too much attention from there really does, um, doesn't bode well uh, for the features themselves. It kind of like brings a guess eye over other places rather than where you exactly want them to look. And narrowing down what features you want to highlight, that is probably going to be your best bet. Just making sure that everything looks nice, everything flows nicely. And yeah, I don't know, I just really do like it all. So going through here, making sure that the background is accounted for, making sure that it all looks nice, doing a nice little mix of both the taiga rocks as well as the faux rocks, I feel like that gives a beautiful effect. And that's like this nice dark and bright contrast. And also I'm doing a little bit of a way for the beavers to actually get to the water itself. I have not built for aquatic animals in so long. And I forgot that it takes a village to actually get them to go into the water. You can see all the guests start to line up for these little beavers. I don't blame them. I absolutely love these guys. Um, and also using those little full rock pebbles all throughout the exhibit because I love them so much. And doing some more bushes and grasses all the way in the back, making sure that this looks nice and overwhelming. Um, not overwhelming, what the hell am I talking about? Making sure it looks nice and inviting for woodland creatures over here. Um, and yeah, just hiding some pines back there as well. Gotta get the Dren grass in there as well. It's your perfect, beautiful realism plant, and it turns out so well in the end. But of course, making sure everything lines up, making sure their beavers are happy. I forgot to do um, aquatic foliage in here, so I will be doing that between this and the next episode. Uh, that is absolutely my mistake, and I do apologize sincerely about that, my friends. I hope you all can forgive me. But here we are actually working on the gazebo up here, using the pillar technique to get a nice even shape. If you guys don't know, the mud pillars are perfect if you want to line stuff up and make circles, make curves make anything like that you essentially just line it up right in the middle of where you want it to be and then you start decorating one side you copy the pillar paste it where the pillar is kind of just line it up you'll see it in a little bit but um essentially you could get really easy really simple uh circles that way and that's probably one of the key things that you should probably start to learn. I know Poison Blade has a wonderful tutorial on it, and if he doesn't, all his videos use the plaster pillar. It's essentially his lifeblood at that point. And I don't know, it's just very interesting to see. So definitely do start checking out stuff like that. Um, in order to get some very interesting buildings and stuff. And I love this one in particular. I never expected in a million years for me to do my own custom gazebo, but I think it actually turns out so well in the end. It doesn't exactly line up. Uh, you can see the triangles not really line up in that regard, but I think it comes out very beautiful in the end regardless. Um, just making sure everything looks nice, everything looks clean, and making sure that the guests won't fall out. So I copy these uh, fences over there as well. So now the guests have little reason to actually go off the beaten path. In the meantime, they can actually chill out at the splash pad, which I am creating right here. So I actually do the full name for it right here. Uh, splash pad. I may actually do a little bit of a design behind that pretty soon. Uh, just because, I don't know, I feel like Splash Pad on its own seems kind of boring. Also, I love the colors of the, um, what are those, the window pieces? So I actually advocate for using those right there, and I think it comes out pretty good. But anyways, that is actually it. Um, just building the rest of that archway over there. Uh, and we're about to enter the B-roll, so I really do appreciate you guys stopping by. It's really awesome to have you guys here, especially for DLC releases. This is easily my favorite time of, like, the entire, like, Planet Zeus, like, lineup. So I do hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys enjoy our little beaver friends, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next one. Take care, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye now.